Well, it's time to jump into week two of my Raspberry Pi designing project. And this one's one that I've been dreaming about for a while. It's it's the Sega Dreamcast. We're, we're going to model a miniature version of the Sega Dreamcast. All right, let's get to it. The Sega Dreamcast was released in Japan in late 1998 and hit North America in early fall of 1999. It was Sega's last attempt at a home console to date and unfortunately was discontinued in March 2001, only a couple years after its release. The console had many interesting features, including each console being internet ready due to the inclusion of a 56k modem with each unit and the ability to replace it with a LAN adapter, as well as memory cards that slotted into the controller and included an LCD screen that would give additional information during gameplay for games that supported it kind of like an early predecessor to the Wii U. This console happens to be the very first video game console I bought myself after getting my first job, and I wanted to design a case that honors the design elements in the original. For the original case, I knew I needed airflow through it, and I put in this sort of generic grill to allow for airflow, but then I realized that there was a much better, more visually pleasing way to do that. By using the Dreamcast swirl from the logo and punching it all the way through, I could have an air vent which would allow nice airflow through it, and on top of it look a lot better than that generic pattern. My original case design was to essentially have everything but the rear panel as one piece, and you sort of slotted the Pi into place. This wasn't impossible to work with, but it did make it difficult to get it in and out, and I was worried that I would end up damaging the Pi trying to remove it. Ultimately, what I decided to do is split into more pieces. As an added bonus, it requires less support material this way, although it does add an additional line to the case. And here is our two-piece approach. So you can see on the left side, which is the bottom, we have our cutouts for our USB and Ethernet. And then from the side, we also have access to our power HDMI and our analog audio video. One of the things I'm particularly pleased with is the way this recess turned out on the side. I wanted to keep the aspect ratio for the case proper, which is almost square, which meant that these ports were going to be difficult to access. By putting in this recess, not only are you able to access the connectors, but it also hides part of them, which should make it look a little bit nicer on your TV stand. Well, now that we've got our finalized parts, it's time to send them to the printer and get this thing assembled. And here's everything we need to build our Dreamcast themed Raspberry Pi. So on the electronic side, we have a Raspberry Pi 4 and a 30 millimeter 5 volt fan. On the fastener side, well, we've got some M3 10 millimeter bolts and some M2 10 millimeter bolts. And then of course we have our printed case. So we'll start off by loading the Raspberry Pi into the bottom tray. So the front of this flexes forward and essentially what you're gonna do is flex it forward, get the ports lined up on the side, and then you should be able to just flex and guide the front panel over the ports and that should that should hold it pretty well as you can see. Go ahead and put that aside for the moment and the next thing we're going to do is install our fan. So again, uh, much like on the IBM PS2, we're going to want it blowing down onto the chip and uh, you'll see the swirl makes the perfect little air vent. So we'll position our fan inside the case and then using our M3 10 millimeter bolts, we'll go ahead and fasten the fan in place. Next, we'll connect our fan to the GPIO on the Pi. Since this is going to be running more intense software, I'm going to go ahead and connect to the first pin on the top left, which is 5 volts. And the ground will be connected to the third pin from the top left, which is our ground. Now we can go ahead and put the two together, making sure that the cable for the fan does not end up in the fan. And then finally, we install our M2 10 millimeter bolts to complete the installation. Finally, we can load our SD card in through the back And now it's time to jump to the reveal. <laughs> oh, this thing turned out so good. Oh, the, the, the details are there. You know immediately what it's supposed to be. There's some concessions made because it's a Raspberry Pi case. It's not holding all those Dreamcast electronics. But I think I really managed to capture the essence of it. 
I really like the way the ports ended up underneath. They're, you know, slightly recessed. So, you know, they're not sticking out completely out the side. They don't look out of place, which is one of the issues I've had with previous uh, pie cases before is that the ports kind of just look like they're there for the sake of being there. This was printed out of Filamentum's uh, Electric Gray PLA, and it's a very close color match to the original console. I think it'd be even closer if this was a new console because the plastic's yellowed a little bit over time, but overall I'm thrilled with the way this turned out. Uh, you've got access to all your ports. Uh, the cooling on it is good enough that you can run it uh, full bore stock and maybe even a little overclocked and it'll be all right. And uh, you know, it's very easy to assemble and put together and I'm, I just love it. So this design is available right now to my Patreon supporters. I've only done a Raspberry Pi 4 version of this. My understanding is if you're trying to run Dreamcast on the Pi 3, which I haven't done, it uh, it doesn't run that well. So I think the Pi 4 is more of the target. If you want to see a Pi version, a Pi 3 version, well, let me know in the comments below. It's not a huge deal to modify it. Um, so yeah, available to my Patreon supporters now and will be available on Thingiverse in the upcoming month or so. Well, that's it for week two. I've gotten a head start on week three because I'm trying to just keep trucking along and I think you guys are going to love it. Uh, for information on upcoming stuff, check me out on Patreon. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that as soon as these designs come out, you'll be the first to know. Alrighty, well, I'll see you guys in next week's video and until then, stay creative.